It always hurts the bigger clubs to get beaten by the farmers. They uh, like to give us money for our players. You almost know everybody who is here. Instead of supporting your local football club, you become a glory hunter and support Malmö or Helsingborg. You can actually hear what the, the people in the stands are saying to you. The Bumblebee technically cannot fly and we make the impossible possible. What if I told you I take you to the smallest settlement in Europe that has a professional football club? Welcome to HFV. We are in southern Sweden at the breathtakingly beautiful shores of the Baltic Sea. I traveled here from Gothenburg earlier today where I covered a game of outstanding atmosphere. Link in the description box below. The club we are visiting today is a community of constantly growing countryside supporter culture named Mjelby AIF. They are named after the village Mjelby of 1400 inhabitants. But their stadium Strandvallen is in nearby Hellevik which had only 800 inhabitants. 10 years ago, now it has about 1500. Founded in 1939, they are the most successful club in the province of Blekinge, being two times Swedish second tier champions. In 1980, they played their first ever season in Alsvenskan, the first tier of Sweden. In 2023, this year, they reached their first ever Swedish Cup final, which they lost against Bieko Heck and won four. They are playing Swedish record champions Malmö FF in today's game in the 19th round of Swedish first tier Alsvenskan. There is no fixture for Mjälby AEF with a bigger hype than the ones against Malmö. 130 kilometers apart, there is some sort of a regional rivalry between them, which is a bit stronger from the Mjälby supporter side. A milestone in the life of this rivalry was a game they played in 1983. Mjälby had to win to stay in the top flight and they were leading in the game, but a late equalizer from Malmö denied them and they got relegated. After the final whistle, Malmö player Mikael Rönberg told Mjälby legend Hasse Larsson something like, now you farmers go where you belong. It was a scandal and the rivalry got heated. It is still a common banter amongst Malmö supporters to call Mjälby farmers. Mjälby supporters, however, won't take this on themselves. They are proud of their origin and there is no better example for this than the TIFO they made in the away game against Malmö last month. Malmö have had a hard time against Mjälby recently. The last five games between the clubs are perfectly balanced. Two victories on each side and a draw. Against all the odds, Mjälby won against Malmö last month away. So if they win today as well, they'll do the double over their anti-farmer rivals. That would prevent Malmö from going top of the table and it would take Mjälby to the sixth place. A player we have to mention is 20-year-old midfielder Otto Rosengren who played for Mjälby and signed for Malmö June this summer. He is the son of legendary Mjälby defender Patrik Rosengren. Unfortunately though he won't play today because of an injury. Mjälby doesn't really have haters in Sweden except for maybe Malmö. They are actually loved by supporters for their quality media work. They have hilarious reels on their Instagram and Twitter about new signing and other stuff happening around the club. You might ask yourself how can such a small club be in the top flight? I can tell you club employees are working really really hard and conscious behind the scenes to make this club develop make it better on and off the pitch for example to motivate locals to support their real local club in Mjälby from a really young age or just make this a cool place make them people want to come to Mjälby they are a strong mid-table side in Alsvenskan since their promotion in 2019 reaching the cup final earlier this year we can say that they have sporting success and a growing supporter culture as well. I'm incredibly honored to have not only media pass, but pitch side access at the game today at Mjälby. I'll be able to show you around in the stadium before the game, capture all the build up to the game. Can't express how grateful I am for this possibility, recently celebrating the second anniversary of the channel. This is the first time I'm gonna be this close to the action. That's why we're here at Strandval and many hours before kickoff, let's go and make the most of this day. Still all quiet, four hours before kickoff. But the Tifa group is already here to start preparing.
you'll have some incredible insights before the game here at Mielby. We'll enter the dressing rooms. Here we have the logo, here we have their slogan. Together we made the impossible possible. And we'll enter the dressing room in this moment. And if you've seen the Europa League final vlog, you remember this guy. But he is, first of all, the head of communications here at Mielby. Thank you very much for you. having me here. You're welcome. Any players you would mention? Well, we have our captain, Toby Lagqvist, number 12. He sits right here. Then we have our co-captain, which is Jesper Gustafsson, 22. Uh, then we have Alexander Johansson, who scored basically every game in the cup. And he scored a couple of goals before he got injured as well. But he's back. We have uh, our top goal scorer together with uh, the captain, uh, Max Fenger from Denmark. He's on loan from from uh, Udense. Here you have uh, Noah Eile. Uh, he is actually on loan from Alma. So, uh, and he was the player of the week of the whole Alsenskan last game uh, when we met Malmö in uh, Elieda Stadion, where we won 1-2. And that was uh, an excellent game, actually. Not so much for the Malmo fans, but for us. Then you have Tom Pettersson, he played in the Korea Toboy. Uh, he also played in America, in Cincinnati. Lillestrom in Norway, and uh, he's a solid uh, defender. Here you have Colin Rössler. Uh, he came through the Manchester City uh, Youth Academy. Played together with players like Foden and so on. Norwegian, uh, he played for the European Championship, the U21 in uh, Switzerland this uh, summer. Sadly, he didn't get any minutes, minutes though because he got COVID. His father, he's uh, the famous Uwe Rössler. He was the um, uh, head coach of Malmö a few years back. Uh, now he's a uh, manager in Denmark. So even though uh, Malmö are technically the biggest rivals for the Mielby supporters, there's quite much connection here yeah, yeah, between course. the clubs. You know, they, they uh, like to give us money for our players, you know, like Uttarus. Uttarus again, again. yeah. <laughs> He's unfortunately injured for today's game. Exactly. Well, I don't know if that it's fortunate or not, because obviously, uh, you know, because uh, me personally, I like him a lot. And I said, unfortunately, though, I, I never disrespect anyone. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, yeah, it's... no, but the thing is, for me, is mostly that uh, I, I want him to come here and people applaud rather than boo. Something funny here. What about this one? Uh, I'm not quite sure, on, honestly, what that is for. I just know that Alexander Johansson uh, was uh, talking in the football morning. He was live and then Arvid Brorsson came in and just put it on his head when it was live on TV. So that was funny. But uh, I don't know, uh, I, I don't see anyone really carrying it uh, or, you know, on themselves, but I don't know. Uh, I think you should ask one of the players rather. Two hours, 40 minutes ahead of kickoff, we'll walk out through the players' tunnel and have the same views the players will have in less than three hours. We have the home ultras on the long side. It's a difference compared to the classic ultras behind the goal. And there we have the away section, right, but only the right part of it because the left part, the sitting one where you see the seats, is a home area, actually. So we'll have a TIFO here. That part behind the goal is the family section. You have the mascot there, all sorts of events, I guess, yeah, to keep the community like, uh, together. We have like uh, candy, like uh, throw candy, and uh, we have all sorts of comp uh, competitions or you can win things or whatever. And yeah, we have our bumblebee, which is our logo. And it, why, it's be, why it's a bumblebee is because obviously a bumblebee technically cannot fly and we make the impossible possible. TIFO preparations from close in here. We have all the insider views and they're preparing it on the roof or from the roof. That's not something you would see regularly. We have the pleasure of the head of Silas Tribana joining us. Tell the viewers what the term Silas Tribana and Mielby TIFO mean here at... Yeah, yeah, so essentially we're at the heart at, of Stamvala. It's a little bit special because Mjelby TIFO is the only grouping here at uh, the home stands in Mjelby. And then we got Silas Ribana, founded in 1992, and uh, it's the official supporters group. Uh, so Mjelby TIFO is responsible for all the choreographies on the stands here. And I think in the, in the last years we've done some great choreographies. Maybe Mjelby TIFO is the most important part of uh, Mielby homestands. I guess if it wouldn't be for us, we wouldn't be 
that big of a, a club we've been in the recent years. How did this name come of Sekhu Nito Tvo? That means like Section 92? Yeah, so, so, so if I'm about to tell you the truth, uh, we, we couldn't come up with a better name. So actually, Sida Zirman is a quite classic old uh, supporters uh, organization or a club. So actually we were founded in 1992 and that's why we took the name of Section 92 or in Swedish Sekundi This stadium got the experience a Swedish Cup final in the first time of its history. How was it for an experience? Uh, it was uh, it was really nice. It was really crazy actually. Uh, I think it's the biggest game ever played at Stramvallen and everybody hates to come to Stramvallen. It's it got this special atmosphere. I would compare it to uh, a cold night in Stoke if I would like to compare it to anything else. Uh, it's quite the it, picture, I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and everyone should hate the comer, but actually we lost, so maybe it didn't mean too much. We talked about the away section before. Can you tell a bit about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually the away supporters tell us it's the worst. In Alsvenskan or in whole Sweden comparing to lower leagues as well? Uh, yeah. Probably compared to lower leagues as well because they haven't got the fans at least. Uh, in the way, but yeah, it, it's really bad. But it should be bad for the way support to come here. Can Fair attitude, play? yeah, yeah, we we know that. <laughs> so you have the fans there, and if they put up the banners, they can't see the game, right? Only from the upper rows, no, and they no. they don't have a roof. And that little home section next to it, which is sitting, already has a roof, so that's like in your face. Yeah, yeah, really, really. And all, usually the the more ultras groups or, or whatever have their big banners and yeah, they they take up the space of the of the fans. So you need to stand on the upper section of the way stand to see anything. Malmö is the biggest game for Mjelbu. What other games have a significant importance for this club? At the moment it must be Kalma, uh, which have some kind of rivality, but... Usually it's Malmö because uh, back in the days, or let's say 10 years ago, when Mjelby wasn't uh, that big of a club or maybe in the second or third tier, everyone around here interested in football, or more or less everyone around here, uh, started supporting Malmö instead of Mjelby. And I guess that's why the rivalry for us started. Because instead of supporting your local football club, you become a glory hunter and support Malmö or Helsingborg or some other bigger club in the area and that is where I think the rivalry is mainly from uh, but also some uh, really intense games in the last season and and the fact that Mjelby is more or less always beating Malmö. What about the last Tifo against Malmö away? People can see the translation of it? Yeah yeah I think it was okay. Were you there? Yeah I was there of course and I, we spent many hours on it. Maybe not the best Tifo we had but as an away Tifo for a uh, for a group that's situated in a in a place with 800 inhabitants, I think it's it's really great. Other people call you farmers as something negative, and you call yourself as some local identity. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, it's our image, and it always hurts the bigger clubs to get beaten by the farmers. But we really love it. That's our thing, and no one can take it away from us. So you beat Malmö away already in this season. What would it mean to beat them home and away? Yeah, it would be exceptional. And uh, I really think we can do it, but usually we at least get one win each season against Malmo, so they can never be better than us. On a big match day, how do the preparations usually go? Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> do you make a T4 all the time or rather only against Malmo? How does it look no, like? No, no. Usually we try to, to make as many t as possible. Against Malmo we always have a T4, I would like to say. So you qualified to Allsvenskan again in 2019 and finished fifth in 2020 and then to ninth places, yeah. which is pretty decent for a small club like Mjelby from a small village. Is that the reason why the supporter culture grew and you have sold out games every now and then? Yeah, most probably it plays a big part in the picture because I, I remember when we were in the third tire and it was almost only Mjelby Tefo at the home stands. And then it grew partially until we, we got to the Allsvenskan again. But actually I think now uh, it become more of a trend or, or it became a little bit viral to be a football supporter and 
to support your local teams. Actually, Culture is growing now for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. So uh, actually a lot of younger supporters came to the home stands and started supporting our team as well. But I guess without Allsvenskan, we wouldn't have got there at all, actually. But now that it's going so well, you would think that the local guys here in the area would choose then Mjelbe and not Malmö or any other club, Kalmar, whoever. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope so. But for sure, not all of them will. Welcome to Aviv, guys. Thank you very much for joining me for the interview. How was your trip to this away game? It was really good. We went in a car. Good talks. Yeah, yeah. Very nice company from yeah. my, my friend here. Since league leaders Elfsborg lost yesterday against Hammarby away, you have the chance if you win to go top. Will it happen? I think so. We should. We haven't won here in a really long time, but I think this time we have everything it takes to win. There was a game last month. Malmo supporters don't really want to be reminded of. Precisely against Mjelbu. Thoughts about that game? Uh, it was a shit game from us. Uh, they deserved to win, uh, but uh, now we're here for uh, revenge. Who can make a difference today from Malmo? Um, that's a good question. We don't know who starts, but uh, Tahali is always in good form, and uh, Nanasi too. Tahali, definitely. Last game, he's been really good. Score predictions and scores? I want to say 3 0, but I shouldn't, so let's say it anyway 3 0. Nanasi hat trick or Tahali maybe? Tahali, two goals, one assist. Uh, one zero and uh, Nanasi, of course. Such a pity that Otto Rosengren, who came from Mjelbe this summer, is injured now. <laughs> Rosengren came from Mjelbe to Malmö this summer, but he's injured. What do you think, guys, about his performance in Malmö so far? He didn't quite make the difference yet, but he's only here for a few weeks. Uh, he's still a young player and. Um, it takes time to learn Rydström's tactics, I think, and uh, get into the squad. But uh, he'll be good for sure in the future. Yeah, I mean, he's he's not played that much. Uh, what small moments I've seen, he's been exciting. Uh, maybe he'll make a difference once he gets back, for real. Last year wasn't really Malmö's, but before that you won two consecutive titles. And now you can make it again, you could be on your way to Europe. Could this be uphill once again? Could this go till the Champions League once again? The Champions League it always depends on if you have a good uh, draw and uh, right now the coefficient uh, has been ruined for uh, not playing Europe this year. Uh, but um, I think Europa League... I cannot see there. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think um, if we win the league we have, uh, we're definitely reaching Europe next year. Yeah, somewhere in Europe at least. Europa League, Conference League, one of them. Tjena! Hur är läget? Säga Mjölby! Vad blir det resultat idag? 2-0 Mjölby! Hur länge har du varit en del av Mjölby Tifo och vad är dina roller i gruppen? Jag har varit för Mjölby Tifo i 7 år nu. Jag gör allt som jag gör. Tifo gör allt som du kan göra före matchen och efter matchen och under spelet. Är det en familj tradition att supporta Mjölby? Hur blev du en Mjölby supporter? Yeah, it uh, was my grandpa. Like he took me with me here when I was like seven years old. It's been a long time since the first match. What was your best experience on the stands, home or away, whatever? The first uh, big away day game after uh, COVID-19. That was the best away day I have been on, and uh, the best home. Uh, it's many, but uh, I think uh, when we won the semi-finals against Hammarby in the Swedish Cup this year. Who is the most important player in the team right now? Our captain David Lövqvist. 50 minutes till kickoff now. The players will come out on the pitch soon. Goalkeepers already here. Stands filling up. It all starts soon.
total of six pitches in Alsvenskan are natural, seven are artificial and three are hybrid to make it a total of 16 teams in the league. Obviously in Sweden's weather conditions, you have to use different sort of pitches. We're in southern Sweden, so it's more likely to have a natural grass here, but it doesn't only depend on the location, but it mainly does, because if you go further up north, it'll be most probably artificial grass. Malmö has hybrid, for example. <laughs> Here is already all Malmö behind me. This is some experience, guys, to see all this action, all these supporter efforts from so close in. So much of this one being a home section, right? I like how you have it all here. Supporters literally amongst each other, home and away. But you still have that amazing supporter culture with the Tifo, with the Pyros. Strandvallen, you have everything. Kickoff by Malmö.
that could be the one goal for Malmö. What a save! Not bad, is it? This pitch side access. I could get used to it. This is passion guys, passion on the Swedish countryside, 33rd minute, Mjelby take the lead after a great delivery and an accurate header. Malmö were slightly stronger so far, but the goal is Mjelby's, the first one. Here we have the halftime whistle. Almost all the possession with Malmö, but Mjelby were the ones finding the back of the net. One nil at halftime. Sort of a usual curse what Malmö have when playing against Mjelby. Mjelby's keeper, who is the first choice for the under-21 Swedish national team, has been absolutely crucial, keeping it clean in the back without a goal conceded. Malmö had more than 70% of possession, 9 shots, 4 on target. Mjelby had only 2 shots, both on target. In the 33rd minute, Captain Lufkis delivered a really accurate free kick from the left side, which Johansson had it in, and that's why Mjelby are one up at halftime. They're not dominant, but they're more clever. Let's see whether they can keep that up for the second half. It's been definitely an experience so far. Looking forward for more. I hope it's also been for you guys through the screens. Let's carry on with the second half. I'm really interested 
in whether Miadbu are able to keep this up because the pressure is going to be enormous from Malmö. Obviously, they need the three points. They need to go top. However, if Miadbu win, they will go sixth on the table. It's definitely always a big thing for them to play against Malmö, let alone win against Malmö. So I think we'll see two really, really motivated sides in the second half, even more than in the first. Yes. Before we carry on with the vlog, a short service message. You probably guessed that creating all this content abroad takes up quite much time and money. It wouldn't even be possible with our generous supporters offering me a place to stay every now and then. If you have the possibility, please support my work by hitting the thanks button below the video. You can patronize the creation of future HFV videos by that with an amount you choose yourself. Another possibility for this is the channel's Patreon page which you can see on screen and find in the description as well. If you have no intention of sending money to the channel, it's already a huge help. If you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. I know there are many teenager football supporters watching this channel. In case you're one of them, ignore what I just said about sending cash. Spend it rather on yourself, your friends, or buy a new scarf of your favorite team. At your age, I was told to do the same. Thank you very much for your help in advance. Let's carry on with the game. Sunset in Hellevik and the second half is on the way. Could have been easily 1-1 in the 63rd minute. Big save from the keeper. Today's attendance 5,962, so almost literal full house at Strandwallen. as a cramp but Malmö is still playing on now he's able to get up oh, wow. 
incredibly close for Malmö. Just past the post, or even hit it. No, I don't think it has hit it. It was really, really close. It was actually their biggest chance to equalize in the second half. My friend said Mjadbe are playing Mourinho game, and uh, he's true about that. Mjadbe's only goal is to hold it out, and they are succeeding in it so far. We only have 15 seconds left from regular time. These supporters are less than three minutes away from celebrating back-to-back -back wins against Malmö this season, against the Swedish record champions. story this is. Mjelby just beat Malmö home and away in Alsvenskan 2023 and look at what it means to them. They were celebrating with the players, the players with the supporters, like a proper family. Everybody at Mjelbu is living this dream together. The players, the staff, the supporters, everyone around the club. Might not be the biggest quality of football, but it doesn't get more pure than this, believe me.
What does it mean to beat Malmö home and away in 2023? It means everything. It means everything. It's so big. Six yeah. out of six points this season. Six out of six. They're our rivals and we win twice. It's amazing. Going really well for you guys. Conference League soon. How far can we ever get? Yeah. Champions League, man. Yeah, yeah. We're going to play in Europe in like two years, I promise. As long as we have Hansel Austin, we can go everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Hansel Austin! Yeah, he used to work at Subway. You know the restaurant? He worked. Oh, yeah, there. I, I know, I know. I didn't know he worked there though. <laughs> so this is the guy Echo Bertram who just came back from Jurgården yes. after yeah. a half year loan. And these guys said that I should ask him in the interview. And what question? Anything? Yeah, maybe if he misses working at Subway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll pass on the question to him. Yeah, Cheers, thank guys. You. Thank you. This was magical. Strandwallen, Hellevik, Mjelby OEF. Let's head to the press conference. You're here back at Mjelby. Welcome to Baka. How would you compare the atmosphere of Jurgården and Mjelby? Uh, of course, it's uh, much bigger uh, at Tele2 and uh, with all the fans at Djurgården, but here is something special. It's, uh, you almost know everybody who is here and it's, it's a lot uh, tighter, so you can actually hear what uh, the people in the stands are saying to you. Uh, in uh, Djurgården it's just noise, so here it gets more personal. The supporters told me to ask you a very unique question. Do you miss working at Subway? Yeah, I'm eating a sandwich now, so uh, of course I miss uh, working at Subway. It's, it was a good place, uh, but of course, being a football player, it's uh, better. It was your fifth game for Mjelby. You came on as a substitute in all of the five games. Do you think you can make it to the first team long term? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, but uh, Löken and uh, Max have done it uh, really good, so uh, I just have to wait for my time and do it good when I get the chance. So, yeah. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Malmö failed to go top, Mjelby up on the 6th place. Man of the match Noah Törnqvist and two more Mjelby players made it to the team of the week in round 19. Mjelby have 100% win ratio when I visit their games. You would think, okay, that's 1 out of 1, easy to say that, but no, it's 3 out of 3. I visited two away games of them in 2022. You can watch them by clicking the 3rd and the 4th link in the description box below. And here comes the inevitable, I owe Mjelby supporters an apology, I have to repent my sins. In the summary of my second Mjelby vlog where they won away against Oiko, I said the following. Look at this. Three players on the ground. Yeah, they are a proper time-wasting team. I'm neutral for a, for a match like this and for most of the matches in Auslandskan, but it's always better to see the, the team with the proper fan base winning uh, we, when it's it's this case that the other team is from a, from a small town and uh, and don't really have a, that big fan culture. Oh no, man. No way. Credit to Mjelby, but their methods of, of winning and uh, time wasting weren't too uh, well. It weren't a thing which I would appreciate, but but they won eventually, and they won the second second time. I visited them, so they won both matches because they also won in Boros. Let's put it in the following way: HFV said some really stupid things that day. If I only knew back then what a healthy environment and pure culture they have, and what a proper fan base. I'm really sorry, guys. I hope you can forgive me. In a world where professional football is controlled by economy, it's Exclusively, it can't get more personal and more pure than Strandvallen and Mjelby OEF. The original value of football is exactly what we experience today. Auswenskan is the purest league in Europe. It's a league where supporters have an influence on things, like real influence. If they collectively vote against VAR, there will be no VAR. It's not only back-to-back -back for Mjelby, it's their first home victory against Malmö since 2010. The welcome I had that the club is just 
Wow, I don't know how to express. A very friendly environment. Everyone was so nice to me. The coaches, the staff. We shook hands with the coach, Anders Torstenson, and so on. Everyone was so humble, down to earth. If you're from abroad, I'd sincerely recommend you to visit Mjelbo. It's a 90-minute train ride from Malmö. Should you need any help with that, hit me up on the channel's social media. The supporters showed their appreciation for my work as well. I was presented with this beautiful Sekhuni Titos car for a large collection of stickers. Huge appreciation for that to the Mjelbo Ultras. I received some Malmö stickers as well from my friend in the interview. Cheers man, greetings to you. Massive thanks for all the interviews and to Mjelbo Media for granting me this special possibility. Just to put the meaning of this victory in context, Malmö captain Pontus Jansson, who captained Premier League club Brentford last season and came back to his parent club this summer, his signing bonus is as much as Mjelbo's yearly budget or at least that's the rumor i'd recommend you to check out the sweden playlist link 5 in the description to see all the match day content i created in sweden so far if you like this match day documentary join me on the channel's social media as well what an exceptional experience this was it will be engraved in my memory forever i was hfv see you in the next one